Welcome to Sassafras Valley. I make bluebird houses and wren houses in batches of 10 each. When I get a little bit low on them, I whip up another batch. Well, I got low on them, so I decided it was time to make a new batch. And uh, I have around the place here, on the 10 acres we have, I have uh, between 10 and 13 uh, bluebird houses that I put up for my own. But I have another little project. You see, uh, all the neighbors around me, uh, I've given them bluebird houses. And every time a new neighbor moves in, I give uh, them a bluebird house and a wren house and I ask them to put it up on their place. That kind of helps the population of the birds out. And I find it's also a great way to meet my new neighbors. So I'm out of bird houses. I'm putting together a new batch of them. The hole that you bore in there is pretty particular. You need to have it uh, one and a half inches. If you make it much larger, and I mean like only a quarter of an inch larger, then you start to have pest birds, like sparrows and things like that. It's not likely that a sparrow will uh, uh, go through that hole right there because there's no perch, okay? But they can. And uh, you might get a titmouse or a, uh, uh, especially like, oh, I don't know, like a, like a nuthatch or a uh, uh, chickadee might put a nest in here, but it's not real likely because you see the distance to the bottom, to the hole, is a little deep for them. So you wanna make sure your hole's also up toward the top of your house. You need enough height up there that the bird, when they start building the nest, can jump up and set on the edge before they come out. So uh, the spacing that I use on this is uh, two and a quarter inches down to the uh, center of the hole and uh, inch and a half diameter. Seems to work.
I need to let the bit cool a little bit. This plastic heats that bit up pretty fast. Okay, so that's all ten of them there. Now, bore some mounting holes in them. Okay, mounting holes. We've lived in this place for almost 35 years, and we've had bluebird houses up ever since we moved here. And I estimate that we have raised well over 300 bluebirds during that time. <clears throat> well, it's time to do some assembly. So, Start with a little glue. Using uh, Type Bond Type 3, which is an outdoor glue. So I'll, uh, I'll use the boards on the table here uh, as my square, my guide for square. Just get them in the ballpark till I get a clamp on it. Pretty close. Okay, so. Uh... 
Let's see how far off. off a little bit, so you need to see if that'll bring it around. That's about right where I want it. Using pin nails for this, the glue will actually hold it. This will hold it in place till the glue dries. The boards are a little warped, so I have to use a few more nails than I would normally use. If it was uh, straight wood, but it's cedar. So. Oh, got one come out there. I'll fix it later. So this is a spacer here that I can use to make sure I get it set on there the right height. That's that first square. Okay. Now put the top on. This uh, will hold it where I want it. And When driving these nails, it's important to have your gun aligned so that you can get it straight up and down and hopefully you don't end up missing that little thin, it's only a half inch board, so you don't have a lot of leeway. I'm using one and three eighths inch nails. So they can they can divert out the sides easily. They can, uh, although this is a fairly soft wood, you can still have problems with uh, the uh, grain. 
rain causing the nails to divert through the sides, but I got all lows. Drive another one in there to replace that. Right. That'll do it. Yeah. Okay, so now I need to put this door in the front. Oh. Yeah, let's drill the holes first. This will be hinges, the hinge stems. Spacers keep the door aligned along the center. When you drive these hinge pins in, you need to have the same spacing on each side. So that when you look at the front, it's not too crooked. Okay. And one last thing, we need to put the latch nail in it. And I like it about there. So 
I'll mark it. thing to do. Got to take that block out of there. There you go. Another one done. Whoa. Missed the hole. Ten of them done, all put together. They uh, came out decent. I use a uh, horseshoe nail to hold the door closed, and you can just lift it open and clean them. Seems to work pretty good. Horseshoe nail works well because it has the bigger head that you can grip on and it's a straight, nice straight shaft. Uh, it'll rust up, but it doesn't hurt anything. It's, you know, it's a birdhouse. So anyway, I got these done. That gives me 13 total. There's 10 there. And then the three I already had done. So it gives me 13 of them. Uh, and I've got a pile of them over here that are uh, odds and ends. Some of those things are 10, 12 years old. They need some repair. So I've got a few extra boards around here and I'll just uh, Go ahead and get those repaired. Use them around the farm here. Those aren't the ones I give away. But next, gonna be the wren houses. Okay? Gotta start making those next. But I think before I do that, I'll take a little break because the new grizzly catalogs come in and I got some mighty fine equipment in here. And a boy's got a dream. You know what I mean? So I appreciate you hanging with me for this.
I do appreciate you watching, and you have nothing less than a wonderful day.